So guys, we're back with another video. It has been quite a long time and that should give you a bit of foreshadowing in terms of the free time allocation that you guys will have here. So let's get into it. Lust in Ukraine, episode three. <laughs> What is up guys, it's Hader Ali here. This is a bit of post editing realization and a small little notice that the original video was massively too long. So what I've done is I've broken down the video into three main sections. Each of the sections are gonna be approximately 10 minutes long, but the last one might be only five minutes long. This is mainly so you guys don't switch off and get bored during the videos and that you guys can retain most of the information when I present it. So hopefully you guys enjoy this first part and let's get into it. So just a bit of introduction again. My name is Haider Ali and I'm with the Ali's Media YouTube channel operating out of Dnipro, Ukraine, where I'm studying graduate entry medicine at Dnipro Medical Institute. Fun. <laughs> so as you guys have read the title, hopefully, you guys will understand that this video is going to be covering the main outline of the course, what's involved, how it's taught. And if you guys stick around till the end, you'll be taught how to more efficiently time manage yourself while on this course and just a bit of tips and tricks I use during revision and just a lovely sneaky little way to supplement your notes using a platform that I use myself. It's very good, stick around. So I can only give my perspective as a third year graduate entry medicine student. So I entered into the third year of this course. And if you look and have done your research, the course sort of spans from years one to six with years one and three being preclinical and years four to six being clinical. So if you guys are looking for information on the undergraduate part of the course. So if you are looking to enter into the first or second years of the course, unfortunately this video isn't gonna be for you because I don't have much information on that and I decide to only give, only give information on what I know and what I've experienced for myself. Also, if you guys are looking for information in terms of entering into the fourth year, in all honesty, I didn't know you could do that, but I've met a few people that have done that. So if you guys are looking for information concerning this, again, this video might not be for you because I've just started in the third year and I've got very limited information about the upper years in terms of what they do go through. So just to give you a broad overview of the teaching here, so it's a mainly independent style of learning in terms of the teachers will provide you with the resources that you need to get the information out of. And then you'll have to go away and learn this on your own time, after which you will go through a string of practical classes where your knowledge is consolidated through MCQs, testing and oral discussions. It's quite different from the UK style of learning because in terms of UK medical schools, you are tested quite infrequently, by which I mean mainly end of module tests and end of year exams, as opposed to having your group discussions count towards the 
overall mark. But here, how you participate in the discussions that take place with your group and your lecturers, this mark that's given to you based on your test performance and your oral discussion performance will ultimately add up to a final mark and sort of contribute to your overall grade for the year. Obviously the final exam has more weighting but it does help if you keep attaining solid scores throughout the rest of your year. So in terms of timetabling it's very, very similar to if you've studied in a UK secondary school, actually, uh, meaning that there is a set start time and finish time in terms of when lectures can happen. I sometimes have lectures from half past eight in the morning, radiology being that one, and it sort of goes up till about the half past four, five o'clock mark, and that is sort of a hard stop after that. There are definitely extra lectures and revision classes that are put on by the lecturers. However, these are sort of out of hours lectures that can happen on a Saturday or an evening. It really is up to the professor's and lecturer's discretion. So yeah, in terms of timetabling, it is very, very hectic, especially if you look at the third year. Uh, for me personally, I know Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday go by in a flash because it's you have about six hours of lectures non-stop and then you are expected to do four hours minimum of out-of-hours work to prepare for your next lectures and so on and so forth. So I've already touched on this topic, but just to go into it a bit further... You can ask your professors and lecturers for extra classes to consolidate your notes, go through any questions that you might have, but it really is up to their discretion. And there are even further classes that are put on by UK doctors that are set up by the student union. And these are definitely a resource to take advantage of. But again, I'll touch on that further into the video. One thing that I did forget to mention is that you are expected to go into great depth in terms of your preparation for the practicals and oral discussions because the consequences of not doing so is not just a bad grade. You will be grilled severely and uh, I mean I have it myself because uh, but I have seen people get roasted quite severely. And it's not a very pleasant experience, but I guess, I mean, if you've been named and shamed in front of the class for, for forgetting a key piece of information, at least that information will stick for next time. So now we're moving on to another point, which is your groups and its structure. So a lot of you will be allocated a dozen, even though the number of people that are in your group varies between seven to 13, so it's not strictly a dozen. And these will be your groups for the remainder of the year. Once you're given a timetable, you'll find where your dozen has to be at specific times, etc., etc. Within the group, there is a group leader and a vice group leader, and you'll find that the group leader will be giving you instructions and information materials handed down from the lecturers themselves and you'll also find it's a very close-knit network here as the group leaders and a lot of other people have the phones, whatsapps, vibers of the professors and doctors themselves as that's how you maintain contact with them and ask them questions. Obviously you shouldn't be contacting them at unsociable hours of the night but that's just a given. So as I was saying, the group leader is in charge of delivering the materials to you that they've received from the lecturers. And they're also in charge of sort of managing the group and keeping relations quite good with the other groups as well. And the vice group leaders are just on hand to help the group leader whenever they're needed. So apart from the extra responsibility that comes with the role, you get a few perks in terms of knowing when everything is going to happen before anyone else does, 
trying to keep your head in the game in terms of keeping connections with the professors. As I'm told, that gives you quite a few perks down the line in terms of more rotation time here and there. But again, that is hearsay coming from the fourth and fifth years. And I'm only a third year, so I can't properly speak on that. So don't take my word for it just yet. The process of selection for these group leaders is either they're randomly selected at the start of the year or they're selected based on if the dean likes your application, personal statement, etc. etc. Or finally, you could apply to you could apply to the position at the start of the year and get selected that way. But yeah, see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.